Xbox two. Hello, welcome back to another video. Today is what? WR round four. Uh, I wish I nailed it on the first lap, so I had two new sets. I wanna say, I don't know. Um but yeah, anyway. Um in the background is qualifying three. Um because I forgot once again to record Q1 and 2 because I'm stupid. But anyway, um, in background, obviously, it's qualifying three. And um, this is the hunt for pole. Um, so, yeah, um, this is my first run on very used tyres. Um, yeah, these were like. What? This, these are a good. Um, what five six percent old uh, by starting this lap? So going into this, I just want a banker that I can work off and uh, get a good last time on. Hopefully, anyway. You see her in the background. Uh, half attempt, nearly seven hundreds up on my previous first sector that I did, and that gives us a two nine first, which is very slow. Uh, but the used tyres I'll see when we go on the fresh on the end of the session, we will gain a lot of time. Let's see how Nicholas Long goes as a 0.4, um, which I was predicting pole to be a 0 0.0, 0 0.1. Pretty, pretty, second. pretty second hand, not gonna lie. I said tyres feel second hand. Um, but yeah, I was expecting pole to be 0 0.0, 0 0.1. A um, little bit out of my reach, I'm not gonna lie. Because on the day I only did two sessions of practice, but I did a bit on the day before, so practice is still okay-ish. Um, leading into this, as timing is furious. <laughs> um, but yeah, but now uh, that's past P8, and now we need a good lap here uh, to get. At the front of the grid, um, potentially take pole around Zandvoort, as that is a massive sigh as we go into turn one, breaking just at that bridge, completely missing the apex. That's not a good start to lap at all. Um, as we head into the trickiest corner on the track, I'd say hitting that really nicely, to be fair. So, um, we've had a bad first corner, uh, a good second, and third. Which gives us a decent first sector as we head into the, I don't know what that's called, fast right hander. Doing it nicely and heading into the next right hander. Missing the apex slightly, but carrying good speed. And now into the tricky middle sector, carrying good speed again. Out wide, fling it in the left. Uh, missing it, wanting to be a bit closer to the inside, but getting good traction. Now we're nearly three temps up, looking for a pole lap right here. As we, if we get a good last sector, as we purple in the middle. And then just run way too wide. And yeah, that's completely compromised us. But through the final corner, fifth gear, nicely through there. And we're looking for a four tenth improvement, which put us on point two, losing the back end slightly. So losing a bit of performance of the line, but it is a point two oh, oh. one seven, uh, which is P2 provisionally, but Alvaro. Alvaro, that's mad. Puts in a stonk slap <laughs> of a point zero. So yeah, fair play to them, you see it. P3 on the grid in the end, uh, just over a tenth of pole, so I'll take that any day. Um, my qualifying obviously is not great at the moment, but yeah, not bad. Um, I took the first corner. It is well. It is well. But you see in the background, wait, Jake, Jake, it is wet. Um, and yeah, it is wet. So. I really need to mute that, but it is wet as we start the race. And as everyone knows, I'm really not confident in the wet yet on the low cell. I have not done any running. But anyway, let's get into it. Three, four, five red lights. And away they go, finally. Um, getting a good start. Well, they're getting a horrendous start, actually. Shanaka launched off the line like a unit as we're going to use the speed around the outside of Barry. Get. Shanaka pinch on the apex as we pull ahead. Nearly bin it on a curb, that's not ideal, none of that. But a smooth start, anyway, to say the least. Um, up behind Alvaro, Caraton, and Bar Barry Boromand. Uh, so, yeah, we can still win from here, just bending on our interpace. 
um, because I'm nowhere near up to speed in the wet conditions yet on the load cell because um, I'm just focusing on trying to get my dry pace back up to what it was um, to then improve more uh, and then the wet pace can come naturally I guess um, but yeah it's a decent start we've held position um, Can we fit? Right as that is crucial uh, we're right on the crossover even though it's drenched on the track um, as I ask again the track is completely drenched with saying drives or enters I'm VSC comes out and I dive nearly into the pit lane but no it's not worth it yet as I've Jesus why is he going so slow? As I'm getting angry, but Barry actually had a um, a glitch, so he actually couldn't go any faster than what he was doing because his delt was got. Oh, that's a big snap through the final corner. Um, and yeah, he couldn't actually go anywhere. Um, he was on the limit of his delta, and he's lost two around a second and a half. He might have had a different delta. To be fair. As I say there. A different though, but now onto lap four. Um, Shinaka's got a run on us because I am dead slow at the moment. So he goes to the inside, so but he goes up the inside. We're gonna carry the speed around the outside, but again, being absolutely horrendous in these conditions. He's got the jump on the inside. We're gonna try hold it around the outside. We've done it well. Uh, going into the corner, don't want to be too aggressive on him because again, I will blow him up. Because my ability, I no as I say, I got no confidence on the brakes because of my ability in these conditions is woeful. But anyway, uh, it's fine. Still in a good position to potentially change for the win as Alvaro's just gone because, yeah, he had that glitch VSC start. As I say, I keep telling myself I'm going to do um, wet practice, but I never end up doing it. Because it's just not really as fun as uh, dry practice. But yeah, anyway, it happens. And as I say, as you say, the rain is passing. And lap five, are we going to make a dive into the bits? Yes, we are. I've said screw it. And I've decided to nail the pet entry for once. Uh, that was the most accidental thing I've ever done. But yeah, we take it. And now this is the moment of truth to see if we've done the right thing that's coming out of the pits. We've got zero grip, but I'll try not to run over the white line because that is probably prohibited. I don't know. I didn't read the rules before this race. I didn't want to take the risk. But now on our outlap, you see we've got zero grip. Like, this is unbelievable. But anyway... Um, the inters are going to be overheating and burning like we see. Watch the gap in the top two goes to his Jeffrey Ritchie. Coming through the fast right. It is very equal right now. But now now we are gaining. It's had a sudden switch out of nowhere. And dry tyres are now faster on a wet track. So we take those. And we're actually pulling away from Simon now as well. So this is looking pretty ideal. At the moment. As we are really starting to gain on Jeffrey Reggie now. You see it into the hard breaking zone. Two tenths gained on exit. Another tenth and a half gained. Never mind, I've lost time because I'm horrendous. Uh, but anyway. Um, into the final long corner. Actually, I decided to be a bit of an idiot and turn the RS off. I don't know why. I was just really cautious about saving the RS but being in these conditions we should be able to save as Barry Borman and Shinaka Clay come out Shinaka's on hards so that's an interesting strategy from Shinaka um, but we get the move done you see it look at the traction we get in these conditions on the softer tyre five tenths five six nearly a tenth and a half gain on traction we cut to the end of the lap we've gained a second and a half nearly on Shinaka and Ronha in one lap alone just showing the power of these tyres but um yeah that's pretty nuts to be honest uh, I wasn't expecting that but now as we 
come to the end of lap 11, the gap to Simon Vigang now is 3.3. So, we're looking good at the moment. Can someone Barry's go on Barry's stream, see how much your RS is on, please? As I say there, can someone see what Barry's RS is? By this point, it's still somewhat wet. But now, oh my god, that's a big skip. I've skipped 10 laps. That wasn't the plan. But anyway, um, it's turn one. Um, Barry lagging a little bit, but it's fine. And um, we're really comfortable. You see in the top left, Alvaro. I've got time this overtake. I say I've got time this overtake for when Barry catches Alvaro Caraton because Alvaro is struggling with fuel. He underfueled massively. So. He is going to really struggle to the end of the race. Um, you see, 2.3, 2.2, 2.1 is it going to be, maybe? Uh, yeah, 2.1. He is really struggling for fuel, so he's lifting a coasting. Just to help, I guess, get to the end. Because uh, obviously he won't. As I'm fine on fuel and ERS, and now this is the time where I need to overtake Barry. Because next lap we will be up behind Alvaro as I've gone to Narnia on the exit. That's not ideal as I'm using again. And Barry senses this, so he's using as well. Exit out of the final corner is dreadful, but it's fine. Can we get the move? I've decided to turn it off for some reason. I didn't think I'd be close enough, so I turned it off. Um, so yeah, that's not ideal. Because Barry is now going to catch Alvaro and we're going to be third in the DRS train. Um, and that is the worst place to be, as I'm about to say. Come on, Alvaro. As I'm saying, come on, Alvaro, because I don't want Barry in the DRS, because I want to overtake him. But you see, here, Barry's comfortably in the DRS now, um, on lap 23. Um, so yeah, that's pretty comfortable for Barry to stay ahead of me. Um, so yeah, but anyway, on to lap 28. We are... Right up behind Alvaro now because Barry overtook and Alvaro's just, just as I'm angry at Ruben uh, and I think it's Simon Perigny getting in the way because they're a lap down. It's quite annoying, but he's gonna give, he's Barry, gonna give DRS. Barry DRS. As I thought he'd give Barry DRS because he's just gonna be in the way. Um, and this is just come on. That's so how I'm really getting angry now. If you're gonna overtake, overtake. Because he's on oh, fresh no. softs and he's not being able to overtake. As now they're gone, they um How just stopped. As by this point, I'm like, because so I got told that Alvaro's tires are 80 plus percent. This is so dumb how he's still going. But I'm not sure. I think it was just fuel in the end that he's struggling with. So yeah, fair play. As Barry, as we are on the last lap now, still got a lot of VRS to use, but so have the guys ahead. Well, Alvaro does. Barry doesn't. Um, so this is looking at to be a stupid dive bomb on one of them to get P2 or one or one of them are going to have to take each other out to maybe open a door for us but it's not looking likely right now how is he still going? and I'm still moaning about how our virus is still going but I do believe he isn't actually on the 83 and he's not dead ridiculous as I say that, but I don't think he actually was uh, on 83% tyres. But yeah, as we are about to... And he's still got this pace. As we exit out of the that final corner ridiculous. for the final time, getting our first warning. Um, That's stupid. But yeah, that P3 in the end, so where we started, didn't lose wow. our game. Wow. So, can't this complain. But yeah, that's the end. Uh, P3, it started raining again for some reason. Nine tenths off the win. But yeah, a bit of racecraft and I could have fought for the lead there. But yeah, it is what it is. So, GG to Barry and Albaro, uh, Simon and Nicholas in the top five. But yeah, that's for me. Um, cheers for watching. Uh, Pierce Gel Hungry is on Wednesday. And I'll see you in the next. Cheers.